I guess there's also like this kind of like um, these kind of like big aggro decks, like for example Obelisk Combray is like a deck that is often described as like Combray aggro, uh, which is like half true to some extent, in the sense that it's still basically like um, a curvy deck. It curves like it just curves like a lot higher than these typical lower to the ground aggro decks that we talked about, but it still starts on one with like its one drop. Most of its units are fairly aggressively costed, like the like Awakened Student, for example, is a very powerful and efficient attacker for very few, very little power, and it grows even bigger turn to turn, being able to uh, keep attacking that way. It just is less fast. These types of decks are less fast, and therefore like less aggressive, and also um, a little less tempo efficient than the uh, other types of aggro decks we talked about. Um, but they usually have a higher curve and a higher um, card quality, like card power per single card. So you can see there's cards like Seraph and it plays Titan and often Obelisk to um, have ways to still win in like the late mid game. Like this deck still usually doesn't want to go to the late game, but it unlike the other decks, it's fine to make it like to the very late mid game or early late game sometimes even thanks to having cards like the rough and these decks usually um, need some way uh, some ways to like gain an advantage if the game goes longer in this case that would be like the rough obelisk threshold at eight parliament putting out extra tokens once we have eight or more power and it also usually needs some more protection from uh, Stuff like Harsh Wolf, for example, which is where, where uh, Stand Together comes in, comes in. Since a deck like this would be completely unplayable in a game where Harsh Wolf exists without a card like Stand Together. Because it's this deck is like not fast enough to uh, kill an opponent before they Harsh Wolf. And it's also usually often not capable of winning through a Harsh Wolf because it needs... To put enough stuff out there to um, to pressure the opponent, but is still an aggro deck in the sense that it doesn't generate a lot of card advantage, so um, it will often struggle to present enough of an offense through a harsh rule that still is capable of overwhelming what our opponent will do after a harsh rule that build their deck to play with harsh rule and uh, take over the game after harsh rule. So it's important to have ways to, um, in these types of decks, to interact with these um, aggro stoppers. And yeah, to be fair, these strategies are often not that good, and they're like rarely that good. One of the mentioned reasons is they simply don't generate enough of a board advantage, also they don't generate it early enough, and they are often also uh, are not tempo efficient enough relative to the other decks, um, which is two of the reasons, in my opinion, why this deck is like fairly mediocre and doesn't, it's just not as good and as powerful as other decks, be it other aggro decks or other decks in general, simply because it's kind of like a it tries to uh, deploy the strategy of an aggro deck, but doesn't do so consequently. Like the curve is high, that means you will more often play like, for example, a three power card on turn four, or like have like a four power and a two power card on turn five, because the deck only has four one drops. So it will be more often not able to fully use its power, and at the same time makes the game longer, and generates less, less of a board advantage, so it, gen it's, it basically um, does all the things that we mentioned earlier that are like very important for aggro decks to um, generate an advantage and win the game uh, worse than the other types of aggro decks that we covered, and tries to make up for that with like late game abilities like Seraph and Obelisk and Parliament, but uh, 
that is like still not as late game powerful as a deck that is built for the late game, which is why the deck often still loses in the late game to slower decks while also not being able to end the game before the slower deck's late game unfolds, if that makes sense. So yeah, this is like kind of like a flawed type of aggro deck. There is some uh, some slower aggro decks that can work, that curve up a little higher to like five, more fives and six. Like, um, I don't have a good example yet, but like Burn Queen, for example, is to some extent an example of that. And that <coughs> partially only works because the deck has reach. That's like another important aggro concept, basically. Like, if you're not able to generate the mentioned board advantage and also early tempo advantage, you can and have to make up for that by having other ways to end the game when the board comes to a stall. And Burn Queen does have these ways in the form of Obliterate and Flame Blast. So while the deck is not that good at getting a board advantage or even like being that power uh, that tempo efficient because it only often runs like six to nine one drops, four two drops, six to seven three drops, and relative to that a lot of uh, four drops with like six to seven. And a bunch of clunky spells like Obliterate and Flame Blast and stuff. Um, the deck is still a, fa a very capable aggro deck in the sense that it uh, has these burn spells to end the game. So all the damage it can do early makes it more likely for the opponent to just die to these burn spells. So the less efficient you are basically at generating bot advantage and generating tempo early, the more dependent you are on having cards that give you reach. Reach means having cards that the opponent can often like not interact well with and that win through like a stalled out board. That basically kill an opponent without having to attack. Like say you have a couple units in play, the opponent has a couple units, you can't really attack because the opponent would just like block and kill our units and the opponent is at like 7 health. So um, the other aggro decks that uh, we covered in the beginning would all most likely be incapable of uh, closing out those games and still winning because they at that point are kind of dead in the water. But they will get into that situation a lot lot less often because they're built in a way to avoid situations like that. Burn Queen isn't, but Burn Queen is built in a way that it is not that in the water in those situations. So what what these types of, type of aggro decks basically will just do in that situation is 0.7 damage of burn at the opponent's face, ignoring their board and their stalling blockers, and end an otherwise hopeless looking game that way. So that's basically the concept of reach and that's like the main way of making up for like not generating that much tempo and board advantage in the early game basically. Um, another way to some extent uh, to deal with those situations are like stall breakers. There's some cards like Crystallize and Cloud of Ash that allow you to ignore um, a board full of uh, blockers for one or multiple turns or in case of the rally aggro deck there's rally and bandit queen which to some extent amplifies our board for one turn to allow us to attack into an otherwise bigger board and also thanks to the board advantage that the deck generates to amplify the damage that our units that go unblocked deal that turn so that's like basically another way to deal with these stall situations. So while the Rally Aggro deck is built in a way to not get into these like stall situations uh, as often as possible, it will still get into those situations and it still can win in those situations since instead of 
uh, thanks to its going wide and usually always having more attacker than our opponent has blockers. <coughs> These uh, board amplify cards like Rally and Bandit Queen have a similar effect of burn spells uh, on the game since if there's like two or three units getting through a rally still deals like four to six damage to the opponent for three power where an obliterate uh, dealing six damage costs five for example and an obliterate um, is has uh, always deals six damage while a rally has the potential to deal a lot more damage is a lot cheaper and can also help with like trading in combat early and stuff like that so it is flexible in a very different way where obliterate um, is limited to always dealing 6 damage but has the flexibility of also being removal on a unit to generate sort of tempo in that way because if we have like an attacker our opponent plays a blocker we kill that blocker that sort of generates tempo in the sense or like pressure maybe better in the sense that our unit gets another attack in um, that's why removal is important and why removal um, in a lot of situations is sort of better than combat tricks since with a combat trick we have to attack here, there the opponent blocks we use our combat trick we deal zero damage but combat tricks are usually cheaper like a removal costs two or three a combat trick costs one but the downside is the combat in, with the combat trick we don't get an attack in because the opponent has to block in order for our combat trick to uh, removal the opposing unit um, but the combat trick usually has the upside that a lot of combat tricks uh, make our unit bigger so that means if the opponent doesn't have a blocker our combat trick can still deal damage to our opponent while our removal sits dead in our hand so that's like the trade-off between uh, removal and combat tricks but yeah removal if the opponent has targets for our removal removal is basically better than combat tricks because it uh, deals a lot of damage to the opponent and generates more momentum basically basically due to the tempo that I mentioned like our opponent drops a 4 drop we kill it for half the price with our 2 drop with Vanquish in Raikano for example and get to attack with 1 or 2 units for like say 4 or 5 damage so basically we spend half our force turn to deal 5 damage to our opponent and negate their entire force turn and potentially also advance our board further by spending the other half of our power on turn 4 on another unit for example where like a combat trick would do the same but would not deal um, any or the same amount of damage to our opponent all right i think that um, covers everything regarding these types of aggro decks. I'm um, going to sum it up real quick at the end here. So basically if you're playing, building, uh, if you're building or tuning aggro decks, pay attention to having a low enough curve, a good curve distribution, so you can uh, be tempo efficient, spend uh, your maximum power each turn uh, on doing things that impact the game advance our board position and make sure that your deck <coughs> has a way to deal with bigger blockers that stall you be it removal be it combat tricks <coughs> or if you're not efficient enough at generating enough tempo or board advantage make sure that your deck has other ways to close out the game be it stall breakers like crystallize if you are too slow <coughs> or uh, burn like obliterate or flame blast in burn queen for example so at the end <coughs> I want to cover, I want to talk about um, playing aggro decks briefly. Um, basically when playing aggro decks it's important to focus on the things that I mentioned. Try to <coughs> generate as much board advantage as possible, generate as much tempo and uh, when contemplating to do uh, one or the other thing it's usually important to look um, for um, look look at trying to maximize these advantages and how do I best put that um, 
and be willing to make um, resource sacrifices. Like for example, our opponent drops a Sandstorm Titan, the typical example on turn 4, <coughs> that would eat one of our attackers each turn. So we have a hard time attacking, but we have two torches in our hand. Theoretically, trading two cards for one card is not a good trade. But freeing up the board and being able to keep attacking again is very good and puts our opponent uh, with one one foot into their grave. So um, in aggro decks it is very important and worth it to be willing to make uh, resource sacrifices to generate these momentum gains, these like tempo and board advantages. If you have to spend two cards on dealing with <coughs> with the opponent's blocker that is stopping us from attacking, that's what you have to do. If uh, you can deal a lot of damage to the opponent with your rally aggro deck while they have one or two blockers that eat one or two of our units, you have to do it because if you don't, it's only gonna get worse from there. So make sure to uh, assess the situation properly and make the right sacrifices. There, there are a lot of situations where it is absolutely the right thing to throw value out of the window, let the opponent eat units in combat while attacking into the few blockers with our with our army of small units, or throw mul multiple burn spells at a big blocker, and so on and so forth. Um, since you cannot just sit there, hold those two torches in your hand, stare at that sandstorm titan and pass the turn to the opponent, then uh, the opponent's just gonna build up on that advantage and we are going to lose. Uh, with the aggro deck we are always the aggressor, we are always the one pushing, except against other aggro decks, then it like very much depends on who's more aggressive, who has a worse who has a better late game. The one that has a worse late game is the aggressor, so uh, the slower aggro deck with the better late game turns into the control deck trying to prolong the game and trying to trade. <coughs> so you have to understand um, what your role is and basically play accordingly. If you are the aggressor and if every turn the game goes longer is uh, bad for us, then sacrifice uh, everything you can to make the game end before the opponent takes over, as bad as it may seem. If the alternative is us losing, then it's better to make sacrifices and have a, tr have a shot at winning because if you don't make these like seemingly bad trades, bad plays, instead of having a small chance of winning a game that is looking bad and that we are behind in, we have 0% chance to win that game because we're just gonna die with these two torches in our hand um, or whatever else situation that is, for example in the rally uh, aggro deck we're just gonna board a uh, die with our like seven units in play because at some point the opponent will ha have a defense where even if we attack into their board we are not gonna be able to close out the game anymore so try to play for the win try to play for your outs make sacrifices as long as it advances our game plan and cuts the time the opponent's time short <coughs> since the ti the clock is running against you as an aggro deck usually all right that video got pretty long. Um, maybe I can uh, split it into two parts. I'll see. You'll see by the time you're watching this, you'll know whether I s managed to s split it in two parts. Um, that's it for my first um, Eternal Essentials archetypes on Agrodex. As usual, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this interesting and or helpful. And follow me on social media for more frequent updates and for when I'm streaming and stuff like that. That's it again for this time. Thanks for watching. See you next time. I'm out. Bye.